Hello and welcome to a rather different video to usual. This is a choose your own adventure type story. Um, it's like a book basically where you choose what happens and you choose the path thing along the lines of kind of like RPGs and things like that. So it has the element of your own choice as the element of like your own adventure, but it's not a game. It has no kind of visual aid, it's just a story. Thought we'd do one of these, see how it goes. Uh, seen the Yogg's cast do one, they look pretty fun. This isn't the same story, uh, this is just one that I found online, so uh, hopefully it's good, but you never know. It's on a website called Choose Your Story, which is pr pretty fucking good storytelling right there. It's a good name for a storytelling website, Choose Your Own Story. A+. Plus. Uh, but this is the top rated one, so it made sense to go on the top rated one and see how well it actually... I was going to say performs, how well it reads. The hooves beat noisily on the road. Eight sets of them each bearing a rider. The men were hidden behind crimson cloaks. They were so cloaked that you couldn't see their faces whatsoever. The sun beat down on them, but didn't seem to care. As they passed, people's eyes moved away from in any way possible. One older man even went to the extreme of staring straight upwards in order to avoid looking at eight riders as they passed at incredible speeds. They were headed west. Already they sound like Lannisters. They go west and they're dressed in red. Holy fuck, there's quite a lot of text here. Here we go. Last night had been a strange night indeed. You're pretty sure that how it happened isn't how it was supposed to happen. The way the adults always talked about it, while well, your experience didn't probably resemble their descriptions. Well, these thoughts and more passed through your mind as you continue to harvest various fruits. Since it's such mindless work and you've done it literally millions of times, you see no harm in continuing your train of thought. Yesterday had begun like any other day in Ni Town. That's like Ni Town, so I think it's like China. Don't know though. Uh, work. Truth be told, Ni Town isn't really a town. Whoever named it that must have been ambitious or something, you thought. You wouldn't classify it as a village either. It did have a couple of hundred people, plenty for a village, but it was more of a farming community. Yesterday was the summer solstice, in which came an incredible celebration. When work ended, just before dusk, the party on Gam, your favourite part of the year, because it's also your birthday. Friend, Mayor Gorman naturally danced. The Gorman family interests you, they always have, but especially now. Mayor's husband Travis is a burly man who leads a lumber brigade that supplies communities wood. He's more aggressive than a dog with rabies, and you've killed a dog with rabies. What kind of fucking town is this where you're killing a dog with rabies, you know? No. It's not a town if there's dogs with rabies going about a place, right? It's a fucking jungle. <laughs> um, the, daughter Ar the daughter Artemis, I thought Artemis was a lad's name, but we'll just go with it, is where things get weird. Yeah, well, the name Artemis for a woman is pretty weird, anyway. Uh, last night she kissed you, and that was a pleasant surprise. You're 14, and you know you've hands up for the age. It wasn't your first kiss or anything, but she's really pretty, and it certainly wasn't your best one. Eh? The shocking mother's death, death has long since worn off, and since your dad is also pretty attractive, he was chatting with many girls. So he didn't notice you in Artemis. Eh. Um. <laughs> more importantly, Travis Corbin didn't either. After half an hour together, you retired, you retired to your house, you knew your dad had come home drunk off beer and straight to his room. You two moved together over the earth and floor. You were nervous for your first time, but you knew she wasn't. She knew, she knew what she was doing. And the your view was unbelievable. Um, I don't know what kind of fucking story we've been getting into here. She was on top of you, moving the most perfect ways up and down, and bringing out a rhythm. Her hands moved across to you, simulating you with casual, heated precision. Um, I think we're reading a fucking choose your own Fifty Shades of Grey right here. What the fuck is this? The words she whispered in your ear to tread the bounds of nice and naughty, she felt a lot older than your age of 40. Everything was fine up to the climax. <sighs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Apparently this has got fucking top reviews. Jesus Christ, I just don't, I don't want to know what kind of options we're going to be choosing. Fucking go for the acid, go for the pussy. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> um, just before it happened, everything seemed clear. You felt as if you could see over fantastic distances and into the minds of hundreds of thousands of people. You felt infinitely powerful, as if you could control the essence of the world itself. A tough feeling to explain. When it did happen, she went flying off you at least four feet into the air, backwards off the bed. 
What the fuck? To land unconscious before she hit the ground. Last night was weird and not how the adults explained it. What the fuck? What the fuck a fuck what? Is that a fucking fire hose? Jason fucking he Jason she flew to the other side of the room. What the hell is this? Eh <laughs> Eh She woke up an hour later and neither of you talked about it, but she seemed scared and went straight home. You snapped back to the present and turned to see Travis Corbin moving towards you with a glint in his eye. How was she unconscious? Um oh, fuck's sake. Um so we have two options here, turn and run, and wait to see what he has to say. Uh, well, I don't know about Travis, I don't know what he's like, because uh, obviously I'm not this person. Never read any of these stories before. Well, at least that's what I tell myself. Um, so we'll see what he has to say. Well, we won't run, we'll see what he has to say, so we'll stay. It was up to you. You stupid, pathetic, piece of shit excuse for a boy, he leads. You gulp. Just then, your dad rounds the corner of a nearby house and sees the two of you. What's going on here? Tell your dad about having sex with Artemis, say nothing. Hmm. I think we should just tell him. I mean like, because he's gonna find out eventually I think, I presume. The guy who's attacking us, or is about to attack us, he already knows, evidently. So uh Let's just tell them that we had sex with Artemis. Uh, last night, Artemis and I sort of got together. The dad looks taken aback and then smiles on Lizzie Travis inquisitively. And that ain't all. My daughter's hurt because of you, piece of shit kid. Travis spews and goes a little red. I'm sure it was an accident. I would never hurt a girl on purpose. Harry. Oh, Harry. Yeah, dad, it was an accident. That don't matter. He's got a pay. Travis takes a step forward and shakes his fist. Oh, you little bastard. <laughs> he doesn't say that. Just then, Armist walks around the corner, obviously in pain. Beautiful green eyes, contrasting a pale face, beautiful features and dark, wavy hair. She's always been slender, but surely she's perfect now. She looks at you, be sheesingly, as if to say sorry. Nod. Let's nod. Get them bitches. Uh, he could have nod, or you could, uh, it, like the options were nod or look away. But I mean, you're not gonna be a prat about it, are you? Yeah, you're gonna be about it. I don't know what kind of kind of recompense that is. I don't know how that kind of reinforces your friendship. But <laughs> we'll do that anyway. She looks relieved to have gotten your forgiveness. Travis softens at the sight of his daughter. If she gets pregnant or dies from this, I'll kill you. But she's not gonna die from this. <laughs> I don't understand this fucking thing. I don't understand this story. It's fucking strange. You look taken aback. None of this had occurred to you that she could have died. Because she couldn't have died. I, 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 I don't know what kind of fucking sex they're having in China, but in here, I don't think you can die from sex. I mean, not, not straight away anyway, like yes, they and shit, but, you know. Uh, you offer to help the Corbin family, and your dad looks impressed. Suddenly, you hear something in the distance. This is strange as fuck. The sound. What you thought was a sound in the distance was actually the sound of a huge black horse and a riser in crimson robe about six feet away. From your father's back. Alright, so that's the guy, the rider that we uh, heard mentioned at the start. You have no idea how he managed to stay downright invisible and silent for so long. You had been looking in the direction he must have come from and you should have seen him from a kilometer at least. Your dad still hasn't noticed him and none of the others seem to be able to see him. You scream. Ah, dad. I don't know what kind of voice this kid has, but apparently the pre pubescent little shit. Um, your dad wheels around and finally sees the mysterious rider. <sighs> right, so what's happened is we said our dad, and dad's turned around, right? But that's fucking stupid. Because, like, think about this, right? If someone's on the road and you say, ah, there's a car, what are they going to do? They're, gonna, they're not going to run, they're going to look at the car and get ran over. Yeah? Ah, there's a rider, he's not going to run away, he's going to look towards the rider and get killed. Stupid cunt. Uh, Travis and Artemis notice him too, just in time to see your father's head locked clean off. Called it. Fucking said so. Um, instantly, in what seemed like in under a half a second, the rider had drawn perfectly concealed black blade about seven feet along from the side of his horse and chopped effortlessly through your dad's neck, sending a severed head to your feet. Well, you shouldn't have said, watch out. Ah, I knew that. 
I mean, I've never been in the situation where someone's been beheaded, but I fucking know that. Um, don't know how that guy's carrying a seven foot sword. Like, he's gonna be about six foot something, judging by the fact that he's a male and a human, right? I don't know if he's a human, but like, I presume he's a human, right? Seven foot blade, more than a foot taller than him. So like, he's gonna be like lifting. Oh, that's weird. It's gonna be weird as hell. It's like Final Fantasy type shit. Blood gushes everywhere, and you see a similar situation had happened to seven other parts of the village. There were eight riders, and without torches, they were lighting the houses on fire, and then were dying left, right, and center. You take all this in, and in a second, look back to the rider in time to see what Travis. Time in time to see Travis disemboweled seamlessly without a fight. Blood, guts, and feces hitting the ground with a splat. Lovely. The rider was unstoppable, he wheeled and set his attention on you, his sword pointed at you, the blade black as night with a crimson hilt to match the crimson robe that concealed his identity. This is the one, he said in a voice so loud. It could be probably heard at the towns that the need town supplies with food, a day's ride east. All eight riders simultaneously turned towards him, surrounding you before you can move. Kill him. There is naught you can do. Your mother had died around the time of your birth, and now it seemed fitting that your father had died right around the time of your death. All eight of the black blades move towards you, and you feel every life remaining in the town, save one simultaneously extinguish. The riders move back a little, now they've fallen off their horses, their blades then bury themselves in you, instead leaving eight claw like marks four on each side of your face, running from your collarbones to the point between your nipples and your chest. It only shot them for a second, and they leap back onto you, but suddenly twenty men and various horses wield normal swords, but with deadly accuracy and precision almost on par with the Dark Riders appear and crash into the eight Dark Riders. Uh, uh, you roll out of harm's way right into Armis, who had been hiding in the rubble of the house. She was unconscious. Did you do that? Again? You fall asleep due to an unexplainable sheer exhaustion. Is he, is he fucking ejaculated again? After a battle, fuck no. Uh, you now wake up. <sighs> I don't know what that was. It, it continues. We're up to chapter two now. I'll read the last paragraph and then it's chapter two, so it's like an even chapter per episode. All right, so let's read the last chapter. You wake up thoroughly dazed and even more exhausted. You prop your head up and look around. You're in a circle of runes. The circle is about six feet in diameter, and each rune has a circle on it. The runes look like they're precisely picked and placed at intervals. Artemis is lying asleep, but she opens her eye when you prop your head up. I didn't mean to tell him. I felt really hurt and needed someone to tell him. So I told my mother, but Dad overheard. I'm sorry. So that's Artemis who said it. I mean, you could probably tell that by my awesome voice acting, but you know. Uh, just then, the thoughts of both your parents enters your minds, and you clutch one another sobbing. After a few minutes, you both fall asleep exhausted in each other's arms. And that's the end of chapter one. It's... I don't know what we've just read. I don't know what we've just done. Because, like, it was about fucking... I don't... I don't understand that. It's about, like, fucking, uh... Ejaculating her. Ejaculating on her. She fucking knocks her out because of the force. Fuck knows how. Then you get, like, everybody gets killed. If you want us to continue that, then by all means request it, but... <sighs> Very strange. <sighs> See you next time. Maybe.